neutrality. You arrived at Ms. Emily's poll with the intention of giving context to her life. It was an interesting time because we were in COVID. What did you think when you walked into that house? Ooh. When I walked into the house, well, first I want to start off by saying, okay, I'm one of two co-authors. Kayla Stewart is the chief co-author, so I didn't want to put that out there. So she spent, she lived with, how long? Three, three weeks. She lived on the island, coming from New York. So busy, busy city, <laughs> and it's going to happen. <laughs> so a lot of my conversations were about home. I'm living in Savannah right now. Um, but also, back in Savannah, I'm a writer, but I'm also an oral historian. So I would spend a lot of time, particularly during COVID, I would spend a lot of time with the elders who didn't have a lot of people. So I was really nervous about going there, because I was like, if I get her, you know, we were really afraid of COVID at the time. We still, you know, but. So if I give us something, I'm going to have to give us something. <laughs> but when I finally got there, it was um, it was familiar. So it was spiritually familiar. So a lot of things I think when I was there, because every time I was hearing people talk, I was like, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that side door being open, I think that was her unique aspect. Because so many grandmothers can cook, right? She, although she can cook phenomenally well, so many can cook. But I think it was her accessibility and her the depth of her knowledge, and it was just like she was a griot. Um, in addition to knowing, you know, how to cook, how to serve, she knew the old ways too. But when I walked in that house, walked in that side door, <laughs> and I saw first of all, I walked in. It was a, a lot of family. It was a lot of people in the house. So I'm like, uh. so to me, that already communicates something. I'm like, you're you're loved. You have to be, I had already spoken to her on the phone multiple times, but you have to be a genuinely good person to have your children even still want to stick around like that. You know, because like I said, y'all, I have many, many grandmothers, <laughs> like over 50 grandmothers, but not everybody got that blessing like that to where, you know, that people just want to be with them like that. So that was the first thing that I recognized, that wood stove was another thing that I recognized. And she made sure she pointed out that I told my kids, I'm, I'm do not touch my wood stove, I'm not getting rid of it. <laughs> Number three, it was food on the stove already. She wanted to feed me, and it was some shrimp and grits, that gravy. Um, it was a fried shrimp. That's how I like mine. Like, if I have shrimp grits, I like it with fried shrimp. It was like, yes, it was so good. And it was fresh, <laughs> local shrimp. And there's a major difference in today, too. It wasn't no, you know, she bought out the bag, I threw her stove and eat. No, no. Um, another thing, you know, I had my daughter with me. <laughs> she, I had just taken her cell phone, so she was mad at me. And she was mad on bringing her to her. It was like, she's taking me to work. So we sit there, and then was Emily, you know, look at it. She was like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> she was like, my mama took my phone. When do you know why your mama took your phone? She loves you. That's why, because she's want the best for you. And she was like, now go outside with my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> I am one of you know, someone protective mother here in town. I'm like, oh no, she's okay. She can sit here with me, but I trusted her. Go on outside. And she was outside probably like seven, eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> but those were those were my initial um my initial impressions. <laughs> I had the same amazing first meal with the family, so I definitely understand that. Just that little bit of crispiness on the shirt is well appreciated. Ms. Emily made dishes that seem complicated to someone like me who doesn't cook. But she made them seem simple with your humor and with her grace. She made me feel like even I could prepare this. Can't, but I felt that way. Did you feel the same? So just like I think, um, you said it's like a magical feeling towards it too. Yeah, so one of the ways I feel like I organically watched her cook, because it was outside of homes, so it wasn't for like recipe testing or anything, but um, I went to, we went to the museum. Um, I saw some jewelry that I liked in there. What's the guy's name? Because I like called him Kareem. So I was like, I want you, like, can I take you to his house? So she took me to Kareem's house, go buy some jewelry, and Kareem was like, I was hoping, how do you know I wanted you to stop by? Can you make me some crab cakes? <laughs> and it's all that he did, and she said that, and she did it. She agreed, and he said he had canned crab, but you know, she opened it in a way that she just took her time. She was very patient with it. She used what she had, the way she, and, it, and that's the kitchen that wasn't hers. That was Kareem's house. 
but the way she just maneuvered the space, it's like she just, she owned, like when she, it's like she owned the space and she was just so naturally comfortable in it because a lot of questions, because I cook too, not for people, but I cook too, and you know, I'm a pretty good cook. So uh, some of the questions that I would ask her sometimes was like, for one, you're cooking on a wood stove, and I know like the kind of stove you cook on can kind of like determine the outcome of your food. Like, does that matter? The kind of pots and pans you use matter. A lot of times, people today use a lot of Teflon and you know, real, real cheap pots. You know, so you're using good dishes. Does that matter? You know, but I'm, I'm like, oh, you're in a whole other space with somebody else's stuff, and you still create it exactly. What's and it was good, still good, crispy on the outside, delicious. And another thing that I love about it too, because it takes us back to the whole ways. Like today, we tend to cook like my seasoning cabinet is so full of all kind of seasons from all things. When I cook, I use some da da da. But it's like the simplicity of the the seasonings that she would use too. Of course, a lot more chopping than shaking, I would say. But even the, even the shaking, some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder. It was, it was so simple, and I think that just takes us back to just the essence of how things are and should be, you know? It's like, because it didn't take, it didn't subtract from the plate, but mm -hmm. it was still amazing. So yeah, so it's just like, yeah, that gracefulness, that patience, and how she do things. And Charlie, you are a historian, you're a writer, and an author. Talk about that experience of listening to her tell stories and then preparing those stories for the book. How did you choose? Because there, there were millions of stories. Yeah, that was the hardest part. Just having to say, okay, which ones can go in and then decide to say it. You want these in there and then the editor come back like, oh, okay, I'm like, what? But um, for one, she's a natural storyteller. I was even on the way up here because I just went from Savannah. I was be listening um, to, because our own, I talked to the majority on phone. Before and after the book, I recorded our phone calls, so I still had access to them. So I was listening to a lot of them on the way here, and I was just like, she has a beautiful demonstration of showing us how, like, particularly as black folk, our language is naturally so vivid, you know, um, and, and so sing-songy and just so alive and dynamic. And so one of the things she was saying, too, was like, you know, I'm like the old woman in the shoe. I got so many kids, I don't know what to do. <laughs> And it's like in other things, like instead of saying like you know maybe like um, we, uh, we weren't broke or we you know we didn't have you know we we had money, she would say like you know we didn't go make it, you know just it's just like it's so there's a visual language, and I was like yes that's who we are. So just like BJ was really emphasizing particularly just like she is a, the, the most beautiful bridge of the past to the present, and I feel like that was like the the biggest impact for me personally because you know a lot of like history is puzzle pieces. And so many of our people in general, but elders particularly, you know, they bring some pieces and you can fit them together and make sense of things, but there always would be a few missing. And Miss Emily brought like so many pieces. She knew so much. Even I could take some of the stories that people had told me and bring it to her. And she could say, oh, yeah, 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 here's why. So I didn't have to actually add a lot of context. What I would have to do a lot of times, um, if, because it's Kayla, that she's a chief writer, an excellent writer, an excellent writer. Um, but she, she didn't grow up in Gullah Geechee culture. So a lot of those times, that's, that's what I would ground it in. So for example, so she said like, when you all were in school, were you taught Gullah Geechee language? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, as a matter of fact, you know, kind of to counter that, but um, yeah. So those stories, um, yeah. I mean, just you, then when you were riding, she took me to ride and I don't know which one of y'all said it, but when we got in the car, she was like, don't, don't, let her, don't let her take you all day trouble. I don't know who's saying it. We've been going for a long time. We couldn't go to the museum and come back. I felt kidnapped. But um, we were riding by, and it was just like, she was, you know, oh, that, that's the post office, but that used to be that. And that's the school, just like um, I said, like, dude, we will cut through this path, we will cut, she will stop the car too. Don't get from behind us. They just have to drive around. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be them. We were cutting through this pathway here, and we used to grow asparagus, right? And I thought we were growing asparagus. Like, I'm thinking, like, I didn't have asparagus. And I was like, 1920. I'm like, asparagus is going on here? You know, so she just she knew so much and, and told us, oh, man, it was just, yeah, yeah. And then, even like another time, too, because she would say, you know, m many of y'all might have heard it before, like, if you dream of fish, what that mean? Mm -hmm. so you pray that somebody pregnant. She was like, that was not my experience. I drank the Buddha. And that let me know I was pregnant every single time the Buddha's turtles. So every single time I dreamed of a turtle, that let me know I was pregnant. So I'm like, oh, I 
like that. I like that, the way that you can, you know, you got culture and you got like, you know, folklore or the, the, the typical way. She was like, actually, my experience is something totally different. And so it's like, it was so many good stories to pull from. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite recipe for the cook cook? You spend a lot of time with that book and listening to her. Mine was the better than sex. But I had hers particularly, you know, when I was about to go back home, leave my house, she gave me um, a to-go box full of it, because it was like the last of it, so I got like a lot. And so when I was riding, I, I opened it up, and I was like, oh, this might not make it home, you know, so let me just go ahead and start it. I had to pull over. <laughs> to the youth, I, I let them know, I share a lot of the stories. And the biggest one though, is like the value. So a lot of times today, like capitalism can infuse its value, push its values on us. So a lot of times we become individual, it's particularly with the kids, it's like, I'll sleep when I die, money over everything, me against the world, and it's just like, nah, y'all. Like, so it's this quote that really sticks with me, it's an African proverb that says, like, if a child doesn't feel the warmth of a village, it'll burn the village down to feel its warmth. And I feel like Miss Emily did a really good job of making sure that everybody felt warm. Like my very first conversation with her, and, and, and you know, they go long too. I was calling her on my way home, it was supposed to be real quick, like 15 minutes, and we was on the phone for like an hour and 23 minutes. And it's recorded, so I got the exact time. But, um, and I, she said, you know, I'm a second mother to you. And I'm like, damn, like, you don't even know me yet. Like, I know we had a good conversation, so like, let me get there, and I promise you're gonna love me. But, you know, so it's like, yeah, that warmth and just that giving back, and, and, and another thing, like activism ain't just protesting, bullhorn, voting, pushing you. Activism is feeding your people. It's making sure that people feel love. It's affirming your, she love her kids. She love her kids. And that's one thing that she said, and like the one that I started crying when I heard that, when she said, you know, I gave my all. I put my all in this book. And then she said, not everything. I saved some for my kids, but you know, I, I, I gave my all. I put my all, you know, I want to you know, put it in, in this book. And, um, and saying, and you know, just, you know, I'm so proud of my children. I made sacrifices. You know, my grandmother, who was my mother, she raised me. My mama was up in New York, and when I got pregnant at a very young age, my grandmother told me, you have a choice, and the choice is gonna take you from earth to glory, and you got a choice. You gonna, go, you gonna finish school, you gonna stay home and raise the children. And she was like, I chose to stay home and raise my children. I have never regretted my decision a day in my life. My children are doing wonderful for themselves. So-and-so in the hospital, so-and-so in the hospital, so-and-so in the hospital, so-and-so in Wall Street, so-and-so in Burn went to the military. Just, she just laid it all out. I was just like, and that just reminded me too, like when you talk about your kids, the people affirm, talk big up them kids. Like she, she, her kids were superstars. So like to talk up, just talk up. Don't just, you know, I don't care what they're going through too. Just lift them up and always and always. So yeah. And to meet her. Did anything about the way you guide your own daughter change as a result of your experience with Miss Emily? Yeah, and I think that happened in a, in a subconscious way. Um, yeah, I didn't really think about it in a moment, but I was like, yeah, just being more graceful, being more patient, and just looking at the bigger picture of things. Because sometimes, you know, life can just, I'm tired. And so when you're coming over here, and it's like, you got this going on, but it's like, no, nah, like, I'm going to just, Take my time, but then to her, you know, I ain't gonna say like I try to be their friend, but you know, a lot of times you try to find that balance. But like that, when she was saying, you know, what's wrong with you? You gonna be all right? Go outside. So it's like, I, have, I take that approach too. You gonna be all right? <laughs> I'm trying to get you in that hospital, that school teacher, the military. I'm trying to get you where you need to be. You gonna be all right? But yeah, 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 yeah. So she modeled a, a lot of everything. But built more than anything, patience. That was just patience, patience. Another thing, I'm sorry. But one more story on that patience I love when she was saying, because um, like I said, a lot of times we just want, want, we desire, we want a bigger house and this thing and that thing. She was like, I didn't, we didn't go on our first, like our real honeymoon until like, what, how many decades later we went to, I mean, a lot of decades and she was like, you know, we slowly added on to the house. And I was like, yes, it can all be so simple for in our hill. You know, we're just like, you know, we tend to want the bigger house and the, no, she took it slow and it's like, and they were good. And they were good. 
good. So learning the balance of contentment with all we have. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Yeah.